have a story for you. And the best part is, it really happened. It was like just any other night on, in Bethlehem, or so we thought. For on that starry night, a miracle occurred, coming down from heaven in the form of a baby. We were surprised that something so important could happen in our sleepy little town. But the prophet Micah foretold it in the scriptures, when he said, straight out of tiny Bethlehem, would come one who'd be ruler over Israel. Good morning, friends. Up and Adam. The inn is nearly filled to capacity, and there is work to do. <laughs> Rise and shine, my fellow world changers. There's just something about today I can feel it in my bones. It's a beautiful day, and we get to shine. It's not that I don't agree with you. It's just my body hasn't quite caught up to your enthusiasm. Oh, you BC Magnus. Get that body into gear. There's not a minute to waste. I don't think my eyes are awake yet. Well, my eyes are, and you look marvelous. We better get to the stable. Our animal friends will be hungry right about now. I'm pretty hungry, too. 
Well, thanks to our, your early rising friend, breakfast is ready and waiting. Sam got up early, cooked breakfast, and set the table. Let's grab some to go, Gertie. The animals sound like they're about to revolt, and you know, they really need a stable diet. Ha! Uh, but wait, before we go about our chores, I just mm. want to take a minute and celebrate. What's there to celebrate? That it's, uh, we're orphaned and it's just another day in Bethlehem? Mm. And here's this ray of sunshine. Everyone, this is our newest guest. We found him wandering in town last night and invited him in. Well, that's how we all got here. Trixie had room in her inn, and now we're just one big, happy family. Are you going to stay with us for a while? Only because I assumed it would be less noisy than the streets. Well, my slightly grumpy new friend, I'm glad you're here because today... Is he always this perky? Yes, yeah, sometimes even more so. Because today is my one year anniversary of being here in this, in this inn with you five people. Has it really been a year already, Sam? Yep, and I just want to take a minute and appreciate everyone, everything, and, and you for what has made this past year so special. Did he okay. just pat your head like you're a dog? He does that. You'll get used to it. I'm not sure about that. And what's so special about being here, in Bethlehem? So many things. There's good in every day. Our God is the impossible. He will make a way. Turn your face towards the sun, and the shadows they fall behind you. The dark brings possibilities for walking in His way. And when the nights are rough, as you face them, just as Our God has not forgotten us. Every day is brand new. Anything can happen here. Anything. Is someone who knows that taking a step backward after taking one forward is not a disaster, it's more like a cha cha.
I'm off to the stables. Me too. Time to balance the books. After saving up these past few years, I finally upgraded my abacus. It's a 15 Pro Max. <laughs> what a technological wonder. Who could have dreamt it was possible, possible to make something so advanced? OK, my cheerful friends, I'm raring to go. I'll cover the check-in desk. I'll go feed my dog. And where are you going to be volunteering, Blake? Uh, I'm gonna go feed my doll too. You have my doll? I can introduce her to my doll. Her name is Esmeralda and they can be friends. Sorry, kid. I was just joking. <laughs> you know, Blake, serving in the end is one of the ways us orphans Bethlehem can really make a difference. Magnus is right. I'm thankful for a safe place to stay and people that love me. Why don't you go check out the stable and check out Gertie's animals? She'll tell you all about them. Whatever. I'll take a <laughs> Good morning, my friends. Are you hungry? Yeah. <laughs> Hee haw. Bear. But. Bop, bop. Yes. yes. Oh, did you just say yes? No. no. You never know. Here you go some nice, nutritious food. And I forgot your chickens. Don't I feel sheepish? Here you go, eat up. I know it's gonna be a busy day in Bethlehem. I'm sure you make some new friends today and more people arrive at the end for the sins with their animals. They sent me out here to help. I follow the smell. <laughs> Everyone, I'd like to meet our new friend, Blake. Blake and me are very oh-so-talented animal friends. Talented? They do tricks or something? Better than that, they sing. Well, sing? That might be a little bit of a stretch. Nope, they definitely sing. It's a moving experience. I call them from farm to stable. Okay. Bah. <laughs> Hee haw.
They sent me to help at the check-in desk. I just couldn't listen to another minute of those animals singing. Oh. Did Gertie show you her animal choir? She loves them, but if I'm being honest, it just sounds like animals, but I respect her dedication. Looks like we are uh, 20, let me balance the numbers. We are 33% up from last year. This census sure has helped our business and the day has been flying by. Oh, here comes our next customer. I'll show you the ropes, Blake. Welcome to the Inn of Bethlehem. I'm so happy you've chosen to stay with us tonight. I'm so glad you still have rooms left. The traffic has been terrible as I've been coming into town. My feet are killing me and I've been walking for days. Thank you so much. They're doing your left. Only one room left. This place is really hopping. It's like everybody's here to celebrate my one year anniversary. Ah, oh, here comes two more lucky people. Tell them why, Blake. Uh... One more room, Blake. Uh, yeah, last room. You have a room left? Thank the Lord. Every other place we stopped at was full. All I want is a hot meal and a roof over my head. We've been camping out the last two days alongside of the road. I don't think my back is ever going to be the same. Mm. It's on your left. Mm. Oh, oh. I hate to micromanage Blakely. Can I call you Blakely? Yeah. But you could use a little bit more oh, when you talk to customers. Try making every sentence an announcement. Okay, here's your chance. Except we have no more room. So... Welcome to the end! We have no room! <laughs> no rooms, please. Okay, a little We've been time. traveling for days. Calm down. And as you can see, my wife simply cannot travel any further. Oh my goodness, I see that. Get her chair. I, I am of the house and line of David, and we have come from Nazareth to register for the census. We need a place to stay. Mary is about to have a very special baby. Babies are always special. I knew today was going to be extraordinary. I just knew it. You don't know the half of it. You want to hear the story? I'm ready late on it. Story, the animals were settled then for the evening. Okay, gather around everyone, story time! Yay. Esmeralda's ready. What I'm about to tell you will be hard to believe, but I can assure you that it is the truth. An angel came to me in a dream, and they said, Yowza! An angel? Yes, an angel. <gasps> okay, just go on, I was not expecting it to go that way. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the Holy Spirit has given her a son. You call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I woke up and did what the angel of the Lord had commanded. I took Mary home as my wife. Oh, I can't believe you saw an angel and that the Messiah is finally going to come. Believe it, Mary saw an angel too. What? Whoa, you did? What did the angel say? At first I was very confused about what all this I meant, but the angel explained that God had a very special plan for me. Fear not, for you have found favor with God. You shall bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. He will be great and shall be called the Son of the High. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there should be no end. For a while I was worried what would happen when everyone found out about the baby. Would they believe me what, I, what the angels had told me? 
But then a Lord had sent an angel to Joseph in a dream, and I knew that then that God would work everything out according to his plan. Even though there are no rooms left in your inn, I know he will provide something. Yes, we are willing to go anywhere. Do you have any other ideas of where we could find a place to stay? Well, I can go and get Miss Trixie. She's the one that owns the inn. Maybe she has an idea of where you can stay. I'm pretty sure she'll have a place, but it just might be tight. She always figures something out. Hello, I'm Trixie, and I run the Inn of Bethlehem. Lizzie has told me of your predicament, and I'm really very sorry. If we could help you, we would, but there are really no rooms left. I just don't know what else to do. Every other inn is booked up. Miss Trixie, we have an idea. If you want to, you can stay with my amazing animals in the stable. Gertie and I keep it pretty clean in there, and we'll make sure that the animals are very well behaved. Plus, my animal cry could sing to you. Huh? That's very generous. Thank you. Um, go. Can you believe it? Go. Hey, y'all can show them to y'all's room. Y'all know that, right? Y'all... Follow me. <laughs> hmm. Sorry about that. She's, she's working. She's new. Um, can you believe it? I knew today was going to be a day to remember. I've always had a certain way of knowing these things. When the day is going to be incredible, I could just tell, you know. Can't, don't you always think the day is going to be incredible? Well, yes, but it always is. Well, we got them settled in, for, in the stable, but I don't think that baby is going to wait much longer. So exciting. What a blessed day. Listen, Perky, you got to dial it down. I've been on my own for a while, and I can tell you things are not as awesome as you think. Oh, what do you mean? This is an ordinary inn. It's not a special day. And those animals don't sing. And even though you think you have a family here, y'all are all still orphans. Man, man, man. Agree to disagree. <laughs> Just saying. As soon as I can earn more money here, I'm going to be getting straight out of Bethlehem. Oh, likely. 
I think you just need some friends to surround you and tell you how much they care. Come on, everyone. Group hug. That's okay. I'm fine. I always am. Oh, hey, man. what about those two people who were talking about seeing angels? I mean, seriously. Angels. Surely you guys can't believe them. Of course I believe them. All right, Blake. Let's think logically. Both of them saw an angel at different times who told them the same thing. That must mean they saw an angel. What are the chances that two different people would see angels? We've just seen an angel. Hundreds of angels. It was terrifying. They told us the Savior must be born tonight. Ah, oh, see, someone else saw angels tonight. We sure did. They were everywhere. Let me give you the skinny. Oh, I feel another story coming along. Man, they were just appearing left and right. It really psyched us out. And we were like, whoa. And, and there, there was, was light, light from heaven, from heaven shining, shining all around us. It came out of nowhere. Really? Wow. <laughs> yes, it all started when we were relaxing out in the fields, watching over our flocks, just like we do every other night. Then the angel of the Lord appeared in front of us. Then we froze in fear because the angel spoke. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which is to be all people. Take it. I don't know what to take it. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Take it. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to men. When the angels had left and gone to heaven, we said to one another, Let us go into Bethlehem and see this thing that has had taken place, and the Lord hath made known to us. We followed his star into the city, and it led us to y'all's inn. Well, the only people we know that are going to have a baby are Joseph and Mary. They're staying in the stable because we ran out of room. Gertie and Abby, well, Abby, you go take them out to see them. Are we in the right place? Welcome. Glory to God. The Messiah has been born. Just like the angel said it would be, he's lying in a manger. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This baby Jesus is Christ the Lord, the Messiah, right here. I've got to give him something. I just don't have anything. No one expects you to give anything. We're orphans, Sam. Here, I want the baby to have my dolly. This is Esmeralda. Consider it a gift for the king. I've saved up so much, but I'd like to offer my abacus. Thank you, Barrett. These are very generous gifts. How can we not offer everything we have to the Messiah, the Savior of the world? Tiny baby Looking up at me Tears from heaven cheeks I see is this the one who made the angels sing just what do you offer a baby king if this Yeah. 
How can you believe that God sent this baby? He has forgotten about us. He doesn't have time for people like us. We all feel lonely sometimes. And we all have times we feel sad. But we have felt the love of God through our family here at the end, and now through this miracle. The Bible says that God heard the cries of his people, and he will send a Messiah. We just witnessed a birth. God has shown he hasn't forgotten about us. We may be orphans, but we are part of a family, God's family. And when you think about it, we're all really orphans, grafted into the family of God. None of us have to be alone in this life because God has adopted us into his royal family, and now we are his forever. here 
and they are displaying their talents. You, you start to see how they're growing up. And more so than we do any other time around here. And it's so special to think about some kids that have been in diapers here. And all of a sudden they're singing up here. And, and then there are some. We, we have a lot of kids that are not shy at all. You might be able to pick those out. And you might not realize those who are really shy. But they have become so bold and outgoing. I'm so proud of those who have come out of their shell, and they're not too shy to, to do something like this, to put on display the most important message in the world, because something truly happened in Bethlehem. Amen. You know, 60, 70 years from now, some of you are young enough, you might talk about what happened in December of 2023 at Lakeway Baptist Church with a Christmas play. It's something that existed in history. And you know, you, you think back to those who were believing that a Messiah was going to come. And you can imagine some of the people. Where's your Messiah? Where is this Savior? I believe every single one of us here can believe that that really happened in a day and time. And not too long after that, it happened that a miracle came to us from heaven. God was manifest in the flesh, in the form of His precious Son, came to be like us. He wrapped Himself in a body just like us. And there's something very personal about that baby that came. Maybe everyone wouldn't admit it, but everyone would love to have peace in their lives. And many people look for peace in many different places, in many things. But peace was lying in a manger in Bethlehem. God sent His peace to us. Peace with God comes through receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for the forgiveness of your sins. That's what makes this production tonight so very important. It gives the message that Jesus Christ came to give His life for every single one of us. You can know Him tonight if you've never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. to save you. Amen. He, he doesn't cast anyone out. No one's going to be rejected. Right. Everything that a person needs to be able to go to heaven and to shun hell, Jesus Christ provided it. Amen. We try to put good deeds on ourselves and, and try to do good enough to get to heaven, and, and that's just not the truth of the matter. That's a dead-end road. Jesus Christ completed everything that is needed for a, for a person to be able to have peace in Jesus Christ and to be able to go to heaven. And all you, gotta, all you have to do is trust Him. There, there's nothing outward. There, there's no cartwheel you do. There's no religious outward experience that, that happens. It's just something that happens within. The message of truth was displayed tonight. And that gives anyone the opportunity to take faith that comes by that truth and to place it in Jesus. Jesus saved me from my sins. What a wonderful Christmas present that Amen. would be. That every single person in this world of every religion needs. Everyone needs Jesus. There's, there's one religion that offers assurance of heaven. All the rest say, I don't know. But in Jesus Christ, He's completed it all. And you rest in Him and you have peace in Him. And that's the good news of the Gospel. We've broken God's law and Jesus paid our fine. And God manifested Himself and it all started on this earth in what God had to show us by His love through Jesus Christ.
to come to us, born of a virgin. And if anyone's here tonight who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, well, I would love to be able to speak with you. My name's Kenneth Preston, and I'm the associate pastor here. And I would love to talk to you or, or point you to someone uh, who can definitely share with you and spend some time with you tonight. It's the most important decision you'll ever make, and, and you'll never get over it. There, there's people here tonight who have been saved 50 and 60 years, and, and they just can't get over it. It's the most important thing in their lives Amen. because it's the greatest gift anyone can have, and we hope that you will receive him tonight if you do not know him as your Lord and Savior. And in thinking about what has happened tonight and what has taken place here, we are so thankful for all of the hard work. These children are so impressive. Can we give them another hand? I believe parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents are blown away tonight by the talents in their kids, and we're glad you were able to be here to see this. And the kids couldn't do it by themselves. We have a couple of leaders of our Christmas play, and that is Jennifer Morris, and that's Amen. And also Julie Morris here. And we have a couple of gifts for them. There's two sets of flowers in there. <laughs> Whoever takes their pick, that's up to you. And I would like to say something else. Jennifer and Julie did not do this alone. They have had many helpers. I have seen, I, I believe this is a new position for Lexi. She said I can still call her Lexi, not Alexis. And, and I see her up here doing a great job. There are many people in the sound booth. And, and, and I don't know, Alicia and Natalie. Alicia and, Natalie and, and I don't know who all helped in this. I, I'll tell you what, if, if you helped and contributed with Jennifer and Julie in this Christmas play. Please stand up, would you? In the sound booth right here. That is a, it's a lot of hard work and dedication for a long time. And they're at church on Sunday morning, they're at church on Sunday evening, and then they're here all afternoon between services. And they give their full day to this, and uh, we're appreciative of every single one of you. Before you go, we have gift bags out in the foyer. Uh, you'll, you'll find a lot of brown bags out there. All of you kiddos, first grab yours, and then if, there's, if there are families here uh, who do not have kids in the play, you grab yourself a bag. Every family should be able to leave with a bag easily tonight, and if well, and if you need to, hang around to the end. You might get a second one. Um, but, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. The, the greatest thing, though, is the message of Jesus that we've been able to share with you tonight. And we're so thankful for you to be here to hear it. And, and it's not over. Before you leave this place, if we can share with you and open the Bible and, and let you know how you can so easily become a Christian, to enter the family of God, we would, we would love to do that. And so at this time, we are going to close in a word of prayer, and you can, you can congratulate these kids, you can grab your bag in the foyer, hang out and, and chat a while, and we would love to get to know you more, those who are our guests here tonight, and God bless you all. Has it been a great Christmas play? Yes. Amen. Yes. Brother Barry Farr, would you close us in a word of prayer? We love you all.